Hi and welcome back and a happy new year. It's now 2025 and I've got a bunch of videos coming up to show you. I'm going to start the year off with something a little bit different to my last few videos. This is something I think maybe most of you might be interested in and this is a really neat little keyboard, add-on keyboard that you can connect with your PC or Mac um, and in fact it will work with a whole variety of devices including iPads and things like that but I've primarily been interested in this to work with uh, my Windows laptop and my Mac Mini, the M4 Mac Mini. So what this is, is a programmable 12 button, little programmable mini keyboard, and I've got a couple of rotating dials there which can also uh, be clicked. So you've got additional functions that you can program in there. Now the really cool thing is this can be connected via Bluetooth um, or via USB-C cable, which also acts as a charge point and this can be set to um, do almost anything that you like from la launching apps to um, commonly used commands within applications and it works by a multi-layer system they refer to it as layers so layer one layer two layer three um, down through there and what that means is you can have effectively each key each button on here and each knob and each push button on the knob um, can have three sets of functions. So in my case, I have layer one set to my Windows shortcut keys, layer two for my Mac, um, layer three currently unused, but I should be putting that on to DaVinci Resolve, which is the editor I tend to use the most. And the idea being is you can, with a piece of software which runs under Windows, um, you can program a little key sequence um, and also set colors for those uh, different layers that you're, you're, um, you've got set or you've chosen on here. So um, I've got, for example, on this first one, hopefully that will go into focus. The first one I've got there is select all. So um, when I'm copying things like URLs and stuff like that, um, if I want to copy some text uh, or copy a URL, I have that set to be the equivalent to under Windows anyway, Control A to select all. So if I press that, it does Control A. And then I've got copy, here's the next one, it's equivalent to Control C. And then cut, Control X, and, and paste, Control V. So obviously you can do that from a keyboard, but again, I tend to use, um, let me show you the little keyboard I use. Now this is my general purpose keyboard. So this one I use across Windows machines and Macs. Um, it's a really neat MX Keys Mini, so um, <clears throat> it probably is my favourite keyboard of all the hundreds of keyboards I've got. Um, but it's really nice feel to the typing on it, but it's still quite fiddly. It's like a laptop keyboard, really. And I do have, excuse a squeaky chair, I do have, um, to go with my Mac, I've got the um, Magic Keyboard, along with the, uh, the sensor, the um, fingerprint sensor. Again, it's... A really cool keyboard and it's really useful having the um, fingerprint sensor on there which you can't get in any way separately unfortunately um, but it's not the best keyboard for typing on and again doing the sequences for copy paste and things like that it's just a fiddle whereas I can have them programmed into this little tiny box which is about 35 quid so really really cheap and there'll be links down below affiliate links down below um, I can have all those common sequences that I use just sitting on a keyboard next to me. And it's just so quick to be able to reach out and tap them. So not only that, that's the first thing, you can set up these keyboard sequences and it can launch explorers and all those combinations of things like that. And I'll take you through the software in a minute. Um, but um, I've also, let me refer to my little box I've got here. I've also got myself um, a range of, and excuse all the, Creaking and clicking here, but uh, you'll see why. Um, I've got myself a series of different coloured key switches. So what I've rather cunningly done here is these I've bought from Amazon. Again, I'll link them all down below. And these are little key switches like that. And they actually are a full switch. But the cheapest way to get these that I've found is to buy um, one of these things which is it's basically a kind of little pacifier so if you're getting a bit stressed you can have one of these and it comes with a little key ring on it all this goes in the bin of course 
or recycle for something else. It comes with a little keyring adapter and so on, and it doesn't actually do anything, but they are standard little MX key. So I can pull the cap off there, and these fit perfectly on here. Hence that one little pastel green one down there. So you can color code these. Um, and in the case of mine here, what I've done is I've got a small, so I use this all the time, a little brother, there you go, um, a little brother printer for printing labels to label up cables and things like that. Um, and I've printed out three characters on the smallest font, works quite well on there really. So my all copy, cut and paste. So you could, um, you could, if you need to remember it that way um, and you're doing it across you know, the different layers, um, then you can print some little labels out or you could write them with a permanent, <coughs> excuse me, barrel marker. But the color coding means you could, if you're using this and you've got it set up on your system and you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis, just use color coded keys. So um, it actually comes with, in this, this version I got comes with um, white, keys as standard um, but it does come with four little yellow key caps as well on there so you could just use those but grouping things together i could change all of those to one particular color or maybe use uh you know like a, a, a red for cut and things like that on there um uh, or you could write on there so uh, it's just a great way to kind of personalize it to you but the little printed labels work a treat for me anyway and then combining that with the colored light background, which is then used to tell me which layer I'm in, which mode I'm in. Um, I've got to say it's absolutely brilliant, it saved me loads of time, and it's just neat to have it. And certainly when I'm setting up things like the links that go underneath these videos and that, just being able to tap on this next to it, not having to do any of the sequence, a lot of it is just done with the mouse, then the mouse, and this for the key things that I'm working on. So I've uh, got to say, very, very good. So it, it comes with software, which is Windows only. <clears throat> so that's possibly the first little bugbear for people that are Mac orientated. I have tried running it um, through Parallels Desktop, which is the, uh, the, the system that I use to run Windows 11 on my Mac. Most things that I, in, in, that I use, including old, um, old software like uh, some Morph software from Black Belt Systems from many decades ago. Um, it's a great little application, it runs happily under, under Parallels. <clears throat> Their software for this, and it's probably to do with USB drivers or something like that, um, just crashes each time. So you do need to get access, if you want to use their own software, you do need to get access to a PC of some kind, a Windows PC, just to set up all your little key sequences. Other than that, you can set up all the Mac sequences, no problem using Windows PC. So even just like one of my little um, little uh, Intel 100 <laughs> based little um, mini PCs, which you can pick up for about 150 quid, which is a great little Windows PC just to have sitting around running Linux or something like that as well on it, dual booting it. Um, that's absolutely fine for it. Or if you can get hold of a friend's laptop, if you're a Mac person to do it. Um, but there's a but, there always is a but. Uh, there is some other software that I've found that will work with these, which is for remapping key sequences um, under MacOS, because rather cleverly, these come with um, preset, they automatically produce uh, letters of the alphabet and numbers from these. Um, so you can use that sequence to then choose this as a device plugged into your Mac and use another bit of software to then program it, but it's not the software that comes with it, which gives you all the control over the lights and things like that. So I do recommend getting access to um, a Windows PC to do that initial setup. Um, but anyway, there we go. So I will take you through the software now briefly, and um, I'll put some links down below on where you can get these and how much they cost, and then I'm gonna demonstrate how you can use it. So here we are, I have the little keyboard and I've got a USB-C cable that it comes with plugged into the USB-A port on the side of my laptop. And I'm gonna plug that into the USB-C port on the back of the device and it will fire up. So I've currently got the different layers that I mentioned earlier on. I've got those set up into different color schemes. So I'm currently on layer one 
and you'll see some numbers down the side and they'll change as I press the button on the top here to swap between those layers. Uh, layer one is my settings that I want for my Windows PC. Layer two is set for the Mac um, and I set the color to blue for that. And uh, layer three, which is set to red. I haven't really configured this for anything yet, but it's going to be used for DaVinci Resolve. So there'll be a load of shortcuts that I regularly use. So I can just jump to here to work with it. So things like cut, copy and paste, and that can be the same for that. So each of those layers can have um, a separate command assigned to um, each of the keys, plus the knobs and the push button of the knob. So that makes it uh, nice and flexible. So I'll go back to the green layer, which is what I've got set up for my Windows machine. Um, and that's essentially it for connection. It does work on Bluetooth though. So if you want to use it on Bluetooth, there's a little on off switch on the top there, but the only thing is the colors, the lights don't work under Bluetooth. It requires, even though it's got a battery built into it, um, it's obviously not that huge. Um, so it disables the lighting effects when you've got it just running off of Bluetooth. But in all honesty, it's easier with the cable plugged in and you know it's never gonna run out of charge or anything like that. So it's nice and straightforward. And this is typically not for wandering around the house using it or anything. You'd have it next to your machine, which is how I use it. So let's go and have a look at the software. So with this keyboard, we have a nice simple little manual and that has a link to the downloadable software to drive the little program we use to program the keys and then upload it to the device. Uh, this is the files now listed here in Windows Explorer. I've extracted those, it just comes as a zip file and you don't need to install anything. You just double click on the mini keyboard application and it launches to give you this screen on the left hand side. I've thoroughly scanned this with antivirus software and all checks out okay. I can't see there's any problems with it. Um, I think it's, um, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, nothing complex on the website. Um, a simple download of the latest version of it in English. So mini keyboard, and then after a few moments, this program appears here. The navigation around it is really quite straightforward. So we've got that layers system that I was mentioning earlier, the one, two, and three, so you can just select the layer that you want to work on and then program the keys accordingly. So we're on layer one at the moment. On the right hand side, we've got some options to uh, clear current settings. So if I did clear all, it would reset all of these programming um, things I've gone through and set for my keys that I want to use at the moment. Um, so if you want to select an individual one, you can just click on clear. So if I take, for example, uh, key number 11, which is just case. I've not done anything with it so far. If I just do clear, it will just set that to nothing at all. And I can then choose from the settings down on the left-hand side where I've got my base keys, I can choose what I want that key to be. So that could be um, as simple as switching the caps lock on and off or a key sequence that um, combines either control or shift um, or the Windows key or Alt key and so on. So if I wanted to have it to minimize everything on the screen, I could go for um, the Windows key and look for the letter M, which is over there. It's not on the QWERTY layout. And now that would be Windows and M, which is the minimize key under Windows. Once I've set the programming I want for that particular key, and I could go around and set each one at this stage as I wanted them, but um, even if it's just one that I'm making a change to for this particular moment, then once I've done that, I just click on the download and that will download it to the little keyboard. So if I do that, I get a download success. And now if I were to um, hit uh, that key 11, which is move on my little one, because I've swapped some of the keys over, um, it will just minimize everything out of the way. So it's, uh, I say, pretty straightforward to use and set up. That's it in its sort of most basic form. You choose the key you want to work on. Well, you choose the layer first that you want to work on, and then you choose the key you want to uh, apply a function to, and then choose that sequence of keys, and then choose download. Incidentally, on the right-hand side where you see the reading device, when you first plug it in, um, if when you first launch Mini Keyboard, and then plug the keyboard in. And this might be after you've already programmed it up. If you choose reading device, 
it will go and look at the device and then see what you've already programmed in for each of the keys for each of the layers. So it's really just a case of it recalling whatever you've set from the keyboard so you can now see what they're set on here to adjust them or delete them or change them. So that's base keys. Um, we've then got Control Shift Alt combinations. So just for more complex combinations of keys, really. Uh, so that on the first one, it did things like Shift Plus or Windows Plus or Alt Plus. Um, um, on this one, we've got Control Shift Alt. So the same ones there, Windows Plus, Shift Plus, and then more combinations there. Uh, you can replicate those, most of those from the base key setting anyway. Um, next down from there, we have Multimedia. And this would be where you would, for example, change, like I've got mine set, you might be able to see up on the top there. So my top mouse, uh, my, sorry, my top wheel, rotating wheel, um, I've got that set to, when I click on it, it's set to mute. And you can find that down here. Um, and then I've got the counterclockwise rotation is set to volume down and clockwise rotation to volume up. And on the other one, the other knob, I've got that set to, Nothing's changed on the middle bit, on but to rotate left, um, that would do uh, a mouse wheel down, and then on the right is mouse wheel up. So I can use that knob then to scroll up and down, um, or if you on on a timeline where the mouse wheel might give you zooming, you can use that to then zoom in and out. So these are all totally um, available for you to set as to whatever you like. And there's things like um, calculator and WW Home, uh, or launch my computer, or set the screen brightness, or your default mail program. So it's it's pretty complex, really, or, or simple enough to use, but sophisticated enough that you can make it really useful. Um, the next one of interest is the um, RGB lights. So we have a variety of modes along here. I'll list all of them up on the screen, uh, but essentially. Um, Mode zero is all the lights off, so no lights come on at all. Um, then we've got mode one um, on there, and then you can choose the color you want to go with it. Um, so going through the mode, say so you do it where you, when you tap a key, it's just that key that lights up. And then on the next mode, you tap a key, and then it sequences through all the keys. So it just kind of brings your attention to the fact you have pressed the keyboard. And then um, the mode three, it does that in reverse. Um, mode four is just solid on any light, any color that you like. And again, all of these, you can apply a color to them. Um, and then mode five is just all lights on all the time in white. Um, so otherwise it's like mode four and then the color you want to use. You might do mode four and then yellow. Um, and then you just download that to it and then that's what assigned. And the lights come on straight away uh, to whatever color setting you've set um, and whatever sequencing you've got set on it and it's different for each of the layers, hence why I had one uh, layer. One was green, that's for the Windows machine, and then two is blue for the Mac and red for uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, and you've also got mouse gestures on there as well. So that's what I used when I was programming uh, the bottom knob um, for left or right turning. Um, and then there's a delay setting, so you can set a millisecond delay in from when you press it to that having effect. Um, I've not bothered to change that, I want it kind of instantly on there. But I imagine for perhaps launching some programs and things like that, there's a possibility you might want to put a delay in there. Um, so that's it, quite straightforward. When you've made all your changes, and that's across all the layers, or whether it's just for one key that you're changing or for all of them setting them up initially, you then need to remember to uh, download it in order to get those updated to the device. Once that's done, you can remove the power and everything and it doesn't forget the settings. So really nice and straightforward. So there we go. That's my fab little keyboard with um, all my nice shortcuts, which makes working with uh, computers so much easier. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. And as usual, any thoughts you might have on it or any questions, then please, um, put them down below and give me a thumbs up if you liked it and maybe consider subscribing because it turns out the majority of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed. So if you'd like to see what I've got coming next, then subscribe and I should have a video out towards the end of this week. I've got one coming out on storage options for your Mac uh, M4 Mac mini or your PC um, or virtually any device nowadays that where you can store files.
But um, thanks for watching and see you again soon.